Welcome back everyone to another Kaiserreich country overview, and this time we'll be looking at Liberia, as you can see. Of course, Liberia being a little tiny nation in Western Africa, created mostly in the US's image by repatriated slaves, uh, mostly brought to the shores by their love of liberty. Uh, they were actually sent there by a society called the American Colonization uh, Society, which believed that it would be better for the freedom of uh, African Americans if instead of being freed in the United States, they would be repatriated to Africa. And so they created a colony called, eventually, Liberia. And of course, being African Americans that were grown and educated in the United States, mostly uh, freed slaves, they brought with them American uh, political culture and American culture in general, and also uh, the Protestant Christian religion. So this made them clash with the natives uh, already present in Liberia, in, of course, the area that will be known as Liberia. And that uh, essentially meant that these settlers were eventually part, considered part of a separate uh, group, separate ethnic group to the natives, and they called themselves the America Liberians. And they basically monopolized the political scene uh, through a party called the True Whig party, which as you can see is our ruling party right now, uh, which won and monopolized the uh, country's political process for around 100 years from the 1870s to 1980 in our timeline when they were overthrown in a military coup, but mostly um, this sort of party kind of monopolized politics and uh, it was also supported by, uh, funnily enough, the Freemasonry, which plays a part in Kaiserreich as well. Uh, not really that much of a difference in here between our timeline and Kaiserreich. This is kind of where it gets uh, a little bit different, though. Of course, um, because this is a bit of a political elite that we're talking about, they had trouble actually, uh, I guess you could say, assimilating not only uh, politically, but also economically, the natives who belong to a myriad different ethnic groups and also the poor terrain and infrastructure in uh, the country meant that, of course, again, the unification both politically and uh, economically was hard. So at this point, both in our timeline and in Kaiserreich, uh, we have basically the capital Monrovia and then a bunch of uncontrolled bush and now because of that the government is in trouble and is next to bankruptcy uh, to deal with this there's basically three choices for the government uh, they can either have a bailout from germany a bailout from the traditional partner which is the united states or a deal with the devil uh, in this case firestone tire and rubber company uh, now the liberian economy as you uh, let's you can pause and read this for, uh, now I'm gonna close it okay uh, the Liberian economy is basically uh, experiencing like a bit of a Dutch disease it's reliant on a single type of export and this export is rubber uh, now in the Kaiserreich and Kaiserreich and in general this is represented as a units but I believe this is a little bit too small now as you can see there's a lot of rubber over here in the east uh, but actually, historically, Liberia was actually one of the major rubber exporters in the world and actually had the biggest rubber plantation in the world operated by Firestone. Uh, so, of course, taking the deal with Firestone, while it is less politically binding than an American one, which, of course, will reinforce the fact that you're already a puppet of the United States. It does not say this right now, but if we click the United States, they are indeed our overlord. Or, um, of course, binding yourself to Matilda Europa with um, Germany. But uh, you, this would turn the country essentially into a rubber republic. And then uh, it's not that great because... Facility lobbying essentially means that you let Firestone engage in slavery. 
in Liberia, which again, not that much of a concern politically to Edwin Barclay and the True Whig Party, because they are representatives of the American Liberians in Monrovia. They don't really extend all that much to uh, the hinterlands. That's basically the uh, premise. Now, uh, basically the focus tree, the first part that you're going to be going through every time is, of course, this uh, sort of economy stuff uh, about the bailouts. And my favorite one is the German one because uh, it gives you a military factory, etc. But the second worst is the American one. Then, in my opinion, the uh, the Firestone deal is probably the worst. Although it is interesting that it is there. And actually, uh, even in our timeline, we have a lot of involvement from Firestone and actually Liberia's native politics because... I'm not sure, I've read about them trying to coup the government like in the 30s, but again, not a good source behind that, so I'm not sure. But they definitely were involved in uh, the first and second Liberian civil war, as they supported Charles Taylor, actually, uh, who was, of course, a pretty infamous warlord. In case you don't know, you should go ahead and um, check out something about that. Then you have a pretty standard economy branch that just gives you a bunch of industries. Looks like two free military factories, then two civilians, three civilians, five civilians. So five civilians and three military, so quite a lot considering that you only start with three. And then it also gives you infrastructure and manpower. This is of course because you're reaching out to various different areas of the country that you normally wouldn't be and of course also this is um, only available after you are done with uh, the other section of the economy focus tree and also at the end I believe actually if you take this and you have had Black Monday it will also remove Black Monday it does not uh, does not have the tooltip right now for that because of course Black Monday hasn't happened yet but Black Monday will hit you and you can um, you can remove that with direction of the economy. You have the political one, I'm gonna be uh, leaving that for last. Military is pretty standard. Uh, your, your land stuff is actually interesting. You can either go with Mass Assault or Grand Battle Plan and Grand Battle Plan is clearly supposed to be uh, sort of more mechanized armies whereas the um, mass assault is more for defensive and stuff there's also a very good one the liberian task force with minus 25 percent supply consumption which is very very strong uh, with navies and air forces it's interesting because you can uh with navies the interesting part is this the convenient convoys uh this is actually the flag of convenience system uh which is I think that is actually present in real life as well. Some countries just kind of have an open naval registry. So what they do is they allow any ship to just register themselves and fly their flag. Of course, they aren't necessarily part of um, the merchant marine of that country. But, uh, for example, because of this, Liberia, I believe, has the second highest amount of ships registered to its name in the whole world after... Panama, yeah, uh, Panama was actually the country that started this uh, sort of technique, and yeah, it's kind of interesting that Liberia is the second largest civilian naval power in the world because of that, at least on paper, and still today. And then we have the air stuff, which is interesting, not because of the bonuses or something, uh, because you actually have the Tuskegee. Uh, institute <laughs> which is uh, very very interesting so you can like invite Tuskegee airmen to help out and uh, found an air force also you can borrow American research which is hilarious and found a African airmail service uh, which are bomber models so I really love all the focuses in Liberia they just kind of all have uh, quite a lot of life just injected into them uh, then you have a very, very powerful focus generally at the end for everything. I mean, 
not just for uh, the military stuff with the military academy, the defense forces, and the Liberian army, but also with the political stuff, which we'll see later, uh, and in a way also for the economy. Then you have the political slash diplomatic stuff, uh, which is mostly just attempting to expand now. Um, the two neighboring areas, Sierra Leone and the Ivory Coast to Liberia, and of course Guinea too, but Guinea is a bit of a different thing. Uh, these areas actually were claimed by Liberia, at least their coastlines, uh, while Liberia was still being colonized. But eventually, France and uh, France in the case of the Ivory Coast, and Britain in the case of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is actually a British colony, which is why this is Freetown. Uh, Freetown is actually also kind of an experiment in uh, freed slaves settling a port, although this was under British influence rather than American one, and it didn't end up creating an actual separate country, but just a colony. And there's also a um, separate ethnic group that Freetown is populated by, much like Monrovia. Uh, but tangent off, these two areas were claimed by Liberia, but eventually France and Britain lived, sort of stood in and prevented Liberia from expanding there. But in Kaiserreich, this is where the differences come in. We had, of course, French and British revolutions. Now, uh, since the French one in the timeline is actually happening before the British one, and the French Republic is kind of delayed in uh, getting to uh, controlling all of its territory in Africa, we have Middle Africa actually controlling the Ivory Coast rather than France, because they moved in and secured this. But it is not exactly 100% under their uh, rule. It is core states, but uh, they aren't 100% integrated. Similarly for Sierra Leone, at this point the French Republic, uh, nationalist France, was well established even in its southern holdings. And we have the English Revolution, or British Revolution, a few years after the French Revolution, or rather the second French Revolution, and the French Republic comes in and takes over Sierra Leone. Also, not exactly a stable situation, and Liberia can take advantage of that and try to demand these uh, not exactly 100% core territories from Middle Africa and Nationalist France. If you have a particularly strong army, you have a good chance of actually getting them. Uh, then you can move down, get a lot of political power for the liberation, and either continue a military occupation. This is actually kind of... Uh, misleading because this, this is actually what gives you cores on the territory whereas keep our promise liberates them into a west african commonwealth essentially makes them all your puppets and then after you have these areas secured you can go ahead and expand or rather officialize your expansion into other nearby areas like guinea ghana and togoland let me show them guinea uh, Ga togoland Actually, no, Ghana and Togoland. So what you end up in the end is something like, well, stretching all the way from Lome all the way to uh, Western Guinea and Conakry. So this stretch of Western Africa, all uh, basically all of them except you, your puppets. Uh, it's kind of okay. Uh, or in the case you went with the military occupation of Sierra Leone and um, the Ivory Coast, you have a very odd looking territory under your control, then you have a few puppets as well to help that out. Looking in the end at the political stuff, it's pretty interesting uh, because the, you're supposed to have a lot of influence from secret societies, uh, of course the Freemasons, but also Liberian destiny. Uh, which is kind of a revolutionary organization uh, headed by George Padmore, who is actually a real-life Pan-Africanist. Uh, so he's looking to, look, starting from, of course, the left wing, he's really looking to uh, make a revolutionary 
Liberia that can liberate, as it's in the name, nearby colonies from uh, European rule and restore them to African rule. And it's actually basically the most expansionist route you can go. Uh, with the Battle for Emancipation, you get a lot of troops. You get 20,000 manpower, which is actually a big deal in Liberia because, as you can see, you start off with none. Uh, you can't actually man your entirety. Uh, your entire, yeah, the entirety of your only 18,000 man army. So you're really stripped for manpower. Again, this is because. Uh, this area does not only kind of, uh, well, it doesn't only have a sm sort of small population, it's also not very well integrated by the political elite. So that's why you have such a manpower sh shortage. The Battle Plan for Emancipation is essentially uh, Liberian destiny. Uh, fighters just going into the plantations and freeing slaves and just kind of recruiting them as they go. So once again, that uh, I guess char characteristic flair that this focus tree has. Then you can join the international and you can get some good bonuses over here. Uh, mostly focused on your fear that nationalist France will come in and crush you. So this is actually the path where you have, in my opinion, the most chances of getting a Pacific. Um, liberation of Sierra Leone and the Ivory Coast because you get those free militia um, yeah get those free divisions of militia and of course of course that is strong because the most the more divisions you have under your control the easier it is gonna be for the AI to accept your demands then you have the Freemason coup on the whole other side of the spectrum on the right they are the National Populist Organization. Not a party, really. I mean, more of an organization. Uh, here you can do some interesting purging. You can expel foreigners. And that's a very bad idea because it decreases manpower. So uh, you, can re you can imagine why that would be a bad idea in a country that already doesn't really have a lot of manpower. You can also purge the true Whigs. Uh, who are, of course, the main opposition to the Freemasons. And um, in the end, you can get some quite strong bonuses to your division attack. But I'm not sure that it's worth all the problems with manpower that you're going to be getting. Uh, the alternative is to lose political power by refusing to purge people, which is also pretty bad because it's going to decrease your stability. So overall, not the best. Then you have the elections. Now I can't actually talk with them much about the elections because I've never been able to actually trigger them. I have no idea. Uh, it says they're in 1939, but I've played through a couple times in 1939 and I just can't get them to work. Anyway, uh, there's four parties that you can pick from. Uh, from the extreme left you have Liberia United, who are the syndicalists. Then you have the independent Whigs, the social liberals I believe. Yeah, social liberals, the uh, true Republicans and the true Whigs were of course the main uh, party that you're supposed to be picking. But um, well, essentially Liberian United is a bit like Liberian Destiny, except uh, it doesn't really give you a lot of uh, bonuses to your military. You're supposed to be rising to power in a more uh, peaceful way and of course you are a lot less aggressive in your foreign policy. You can still however join the international and that's going to declare your independence. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention, you can take the Star of Africa here which gives you claims on your neighbors. Um, can't, uh, can't, it gives you claims on your neighbors. You can't do that until you're fully independent and at the start of course you're a puppet of the US. But when the American Civil War hits, of course, you can break off um, pretty much for free, so that's not that much of a problem. That's, uh, you know, you're allowed to blaze your path to freedom free of US influence. And then, um, pretty much the true Whigs are what you'd expect, they're conservatives. True Republicans are um, supposedly uh, the more trade oriented faction, as you can see. Whereas the independent Whigs are more, I guess you could say, 
the economically minded ones. Interesting. Yeah, you can get some pretty good, pretty good bonuses to the economy, and of course to diplomacy. Liberalism washes onto Africa. I wonder what actually that does uh, to Deutsche Mittel Africa and Fr French Republic, because yeah, it seems like. Seems like Deutsche Mittel Africa would not be too happy about liberalism. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna close it off with some personal thoughts. Um, I've played pretty much, uh, mostly played with Liberian Destiny and the Freemasons. They're both very fun campaigns. The main problem is that you're sandwiched in between two, let's just say, pretty big colonial powers, which is part of the flair, of course. Um, Deutsche Mittel Africa is the one that in my opinion, is the most fun to fight because while they are much larger and more powerful than you are, they've got their own problems, one, uh, and if they explode, of course, it's very fun. But the secondary part is that they don't call in their allies. Uh, if they do that, uh, because, for example, you are in the second Weltkrieg for some reason, uh, you get, for example, your... Um, you join the international and then you get to fight the German Empire. You get embroiled in a war with a lot of people and then you can't actually um, beat Deutsche Mittel Africa. That could be a little bit of a problem because, again, you're Liberia, you're pretty small, you're not going to have a lot of uh, forces, your economy is pretty weak, so you don't really have uh, the might behind you to actually finish off Germany or something like that, unless they're part of the uh, government in exile. Even worse with the Entente, because while with Deutsche Mittel Africa you can reach about Nigeria, and then you're gonna get an event to sue for peace. While uh, with the Entente, or sorry, with the French Republic, uh, I haven't been able to get to a place where I actually got <clears throat> a peace deal, uh, because the Entente forces are just so very strong and they push you back, and you know you have to stick it to a defensive position. And overall, this just gets very, very hard to finish the war with the Entente. But uh, this is just a case of the faction and not everything else. So yeah, that's going to be pretty much about it. Thank you all for joining me with this overview for Liberia. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, drop down a like in the down below. If you haven't, drop a dislike, of course, as always. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Have fun.